Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a load of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a streamlined version of a game that was released by Gale Force 9 a few years ago. We're going to be talking about Dune, a game of conquest and diplomacy. And in this game, you'll be placing your units on the map. You'll be moving them around, trying to get spice and take control of a certain number of strongholds that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules, telling you what we do like we don't like then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not june a game of conquest and diplomacy is worth your time and bother today and in the future so remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit we'll see you after this bollocks so june a game of conquest and diplomacy how do you play this game so Dune, a game of conquest and diplomacy, is an area control game for two to four players, right? Each player is going to take the role of one of four houses in the Dune universe. You've got the Atreides faction, you've got the Fremen, you've got the Harkonnen faction, and you've also got the Imperium faction, right? Like I said, this is a stripped down version of a similar game that was released a few years ago by Gale Force 9, and the original featured a lot more factions, but this is only going to give you four. So each player is going to get a player map of their respective faction, and and you will secretly be dealt four of the traitor cards and you'll select one and put it face up in front of you. The Harkonnen faction will not get any traitor cards right because they're basically traitorous bastards themselves. You'll get a number of spice tokens which is the active currency in this game and you'll place five active units in the polar sink which is at the center of the board. So this game takes place over a number of phases. You've got the storm phase then you've got the spice blow phase, the gain cards phase, revival, ship and movement battle and finally spice collection in the storm phase the first player will roll the die and they'll move the storm token that many sectors in a clockwise direction and the place where the storm token comes to rest means forces cannot move into or out of that region right and any forces that are in there are instantly killed when the storm token stops there next phase is the spice blow phase the first player reveals the top card of the spice deck and places that many spice tokens in the regions that are listed on the card if you draw a sandworm card then the card tells you to discard all spice and forces other than fremen in the territories now showing in the spice deck discard pile then you draw cards discarding any more sandworm cards until another territory card is revealed and place spices sandworm cards will do over your forces right so you've got to be careful that you don't have any of those big massive long worms floating about you know what i mean so the next phase is the gain cards phase players will be dealt a number of battle cards that you're going to be using in battles yeah can never have more than four battle cards in your hand at one time right and then you can buy market cards you can buy these for two spice you can only ever have three market cards in your hand and if you buy any you'll draw the top card from the market deck and you'll put it in your hand so next phase is the revival phase you can revive two forces for free and for two spice you may revive additional forces and or any leaders for their value in spice right you will take these tokens at the telexu tanks and you'll stick them in front of you so then we come to the ship and the movement phase you can be down from your reserve any number of troops into any sector or stronghold as long as there's no storm there for one spice each and then you can move forces like groups of forces you can't move and absorb forces into another force right so it's only one set of forces yeah you can move these up to three spaces in adjacent territories and then you move into battle phase if there's any units that are in the same space as opposing units then a battle will occur the first player will always have battle advantage just means that they will always win if there's a tie and if the first player is not the battle then the player next to him will win the tie yeah in order to resolve a battle you'll take a battle wheel and you'll commit a number of forces to the battle by moving the battle wheel and you'll be able to play a battle card if you want to as well you'll also stick a leader in the hole and this will give you extra strength right both players will reveal their battle plan the player with the highest strength will win the loser will lose all of their troops to the telexu tanks and the winner will lose only their forces that they have dialed in 
to their battle wheel, yeah? And your opponent's leader is on your traitor card. You can reveal your traitor card, yeah? The player who revealed the traitor card immediately wins the battle and the player that lost basically just loses the battle like they would have done, right? So once you have resolved all of the battles on the board, then you'll go to Spice Collection. If you're the only player in a sector with spice, then you will grab as many spice as you've got units there and you'll add it to your supply, right? And then you will check for the win. If you've gone past the first two rounds and a player's occupies three strongholds then they will win and if by the end of round five there's no winner then you'll get three points for each stronghold that you occupy and one point for each spice you hold and then the player with the most points will be the winner of june a game of conquest and diplomacy what do we like about june a game of conquest and diplomacy so first thing that we really like about this is that it is a lot shorter. The game box says it plays in about 45 minutes to an hour. Probably a load of bullshit. Probably plays in about an hour and a half if you are playing with four players, right? But it's shorter than the original June, right? Not the original June, but the Gale Force 9 June. I've played games of that with six players that have gone on for about four to five hours and it is sort of mentally draining. And in the end, I ended up not giving a shit about whether I won or lost. And then all I cared about is whether or not I was going to be able to sleep that night yeah so this game is a lot shorter it does come with some compromises due to its shorter length but we will get into that in just a moment you impatient shits so the second thing that we like about june game of conquest and diplomacy is the traitor cards add a nice dose of backstabbing right the fact that you can reveal a traitor card and win the battle regardless of what happens is a really nice touch the only problem with that is that sometimes the traitor that you've got in front of you is the shitty traitor with the one or two health and as such your opponent tends not to use that unless they absolutely have to so you're just sitting there playing with your pubic hair for a little bit yeah but i suppose at the end of the day just don't choose that traitor if you think that's going to be a problem right if you do end up getting dealt a four or five level traitor then you're going to take that one in you but we love a bit of backstabbing and the fact they've included it in this game is super duper so the third thing that we like about this is that combat is super simple it does borrow heavily from the scythe mechanic and i'm sure that that has been implemented in other games both before and after scythe but all you're going to be doing is committing a load of ground troops maybe augmenting your battle plan with a little bit of a battle card and then seeing who's got the highest amount and there you go so it's not like you're trying to work out a variability quotient in order to create nuclear fission you're just going to what me know about have a piss and fuck off so what don't we like about june a game of conquest and diplomacy so the first thing that we don't like about it is it feels really, really empty. And yeah, I know what you're saying. June is a desert planet. Of course, it's going to feel fucking empty, right? This doesn't have any humanity in it at all, right? Even the tokens aren't representative of any type of human being, right? All the components are two-dimensional. There's no figures involved in this. And I felt quite lonely playing this, right? The aesthetic of the game is sort of brown and yellow and beige. And it just made me feel like I'd wiped a load of shit up my back after having diarrhea. So it's just an unsettling empty feeling when i play this so the second thing that we don't like about it is that the market phase is a really really weak element of this game right when you commit to spice to buy a market card there's no choice involved you have to take the top card of the deck blind it would have been better if there'd been some kind of maybe auction system or at least have a display that gets cheaper every round yeah where you can do the tried and tested mechanic of buy a card for up to five spice and then shuffle all the rest down but in the pursuit of making this as streamlined as possible they've given you no real options so at the market phase the fact that it doesn't give you any kind of choice you're gonna pay your money and you're probably gonna get a pile of shit that's really disappointing so the third thing that we don't like about this is that the components are really really fiddly not only are the tokens really really small and very difficult to pick up when you're placing them on the map there's not really enough space in the actual regions for the tokens to sit well together you're gonna to have to try and stack these up on top of each other especially if there's say four players in a region some of these areas are so small that you're gonna feel like a saturday night pervert trying to peek through a glory hole so it's really frustrating when you go to pick up these tokens they just fly off everywhere and if you're as old as me your eyes can't keep up with that and you think well was that token in that space already or has it just sort of teleported itself from where my big sausage fingers have made a pig's ear of all the tokens that are in that space yeah so yeah they went for the cheap option and it don't work does it so to summarize is june a game of conquest and diplomacy worth your time and bother today and in the future 
So we're going to say maybe, maybe not. It all depends what you want. If you want a longer, more intense, more strategic experience, then you're going to have to go with, where the fuck's it gone? The original printing of, I'm not talking about the 80s version, but the original Gale Force 9 version of June. The market system is better in that one. It's got more characters and a couple of expansions. This one only plays up to four players. This edition of June is a welcome revision that cuts the playtime from the original into quarters. I suppose you could say it's been hung, drawn, and Right. However, it does this at the expense of both strategy and theme. The board has a chillingly barren feel to it and the gameplay is so sparse that sometimes it feels like the game has gone missing. However, the original print of this was far too long and if you are truly, truly desperate, then this gives you the opportunity to fill your hole with a giant sandworm. So there you go, that is June, a game of conquest and diplomacy. Remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button all that YouTube bullshit. See you next time.